Anybody here? Anybody know? How's it going? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I think it's just uh, the voice is like breaking on my end. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you also. What's up, guys? How's it going? How's it going? Let me check my volume here. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yeah, I can hear you. Yep. What's up, Simant? Haven't seen you for a while. How you doing? Can you hear me? Simant. Hi. How's it going? Can't hear you. Turn your mic off. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's going good. How are you? Good. Hey, Katrina. Hey. What's your background there? Is that this, your is, uh, this is a condo I just closed on in, um, in Kirkland. Nice. What are you guys yeah. going to do with it? Uh, no, we, uh, so Trish, um, our bookkeeper, uh, referred this client to me and we sold this condo. Gotcha. The gotcha. photography looked gorgeous because, um, let me see if I can stop my virtual background. Look, Katrina, actually, I'm right behind your building. I live in the building right behind you. Oh, you live right behind Waterview? <laughs> yeah, I live in the, are you in the Waterview or you're in the, uh, I think you're right off that building right behind you. Is that, that's my building. <laughs> oh, is it? That's right next door. Yeah. So this is a, this is Waterview. It's unit 302. Oh, and, I live uh, in actually Waterview. Oh, we just closed. We just closed this one to 1.3 million. Blew everyone out of the water. <laughs> On, oh, on yeah, the yeah. third floor. Nobody's come yeah. close to that price per square foot. You can oh, thank uh, Katrina oh. for raising your property taxes. Yeah. <laughs> and your value. <laughs> Good stuff. Hey, Darren, I see you there. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep. I hear hey, you. How's it going out there in Gold Bar? It's going slow, but we're having fun. Yeah, it's coming along. Yeah, we poured a, con a new concrete uh, patio yesterday and we're building some decks and it's, I'm thinking probably three or four weeks we'll be all done. We'll be back to we list it. <laughs> looking, forward, looking forward to see that one. Good for you guys. That was a good buy for you for sure. For sure. So uh, I assume you guys all, uh, as people are jumping on or not, I didn't really post. I got a little lazy myself here this week. Not lazy, actually too busy. So I didn't really give an early heads up on uh, our meetup today, but um, are you guys, uh, you guys heard the news of course on the lending where there's now gonna be on refinances, a half a point added on if you're refinancing. Yeah, some news out uh, as of yesterday or yesterday evening. I'm sure if you check your social channels, you'll see it all over the place. Does not affect, um, does not affect new purchases, but just refinancing. Okay. So um, that is some news to think about, even though, I mean, who can complain if you're, if you're still at like, you know, two and a half or 3%, right? People want to complain that they were, you know, I mean, come on, let's put it in perspective a little bit here. But uh, um, what else is going on? What's going on with you, Simone? What have you been up to? How's biz? 
Um, business is good. It's growing. Uh, just picked up a portfolio of rentals um, in in, um, in federal way, 14 units, and uh, picked up, uh, uh, I think, 12 units in, um, to manage in Everett. I'm going there today. So, yeah, it's growing pretty good. I'm buying my first property. Hopefully, Keith will help me with that. Um, I'm in the process to uh, one of my uh, owner was trying to sell a property, so I actually able to buy off market 60,000 below the, you know, market value. Nice. So, so that's kind of, you know, that's something work in progress, but yeah, it's trying to uh, grow the property management business as much as I can. So yeah, 60 doors, just hired one person to help me out in the uh, down in Pierce County, South King County. And uh, so now I'm looking towards, uh, towards up North, uh, you know, Everett area. And uh, because I can manage all around here, like a Kirkland, Redmond, Seattle it's like 30 yeah. minutes away from me but going south is not that easy it's not fun. are you uh are you open to managing like boarding style like by the room management yeah because I know there's a lot isn't there a niche Every, anybody who's listening yeah. uh there's a it feels like there's a need there that's not getting filled do you know about yeah that? we you know? yeah so working on that actually took over one in the lake forest eight eight uh eight bedrooms um have one in Everett, uh four bedroom one another one in uh i think four bedroom as well so yeah it's a pretty good market it's just uh, you know it is a lot of work um so we're just trying to stick to single family but yeah if we're not marketing for it but if somebody do reach out to us we are taking those clients that's a great way to provide affordable housing um how are you marketing that are you using like furnish finder or how are you getting um, your tenants um, so tenants are, we putting on Zillow, a truly, I think is the biggest lead generator for those and a bunch of like a uh, Facebook groups we putting out there and uh, what I'm doing from past, uh, you know, like uh, when I had like the Pierce County and the one Lake Forest, I collecting the data of all the uh, people who reach out to me, their phone numbers and email addresses. And so any property or any room opens up, I send like a referral email to them or like, Hey, a room open up, bring a client to us, uh, $250 for you. And uh, so that worked out for a few, uh, for, uh, for Lake Forest one. So the Everett one is completely occupied. So I haven't tried that out yet, but um, yeah, Zillow, you cannot post rent by room. So it only has a hot pad and uh, um, truly, uh, which again, will start costing us money very soon. Um, but yeah, those are the two major lead generations. Right, didn't Zillow just change its uh, yeah. rental platform policy? You guys were- yeah, so yeah so ten dollars per week uh, after the first property uh, and um, so yeah if you're a landlord and doing it yourself all you can do is post one property for free after that ten dollars so there is a way because a lot of us are realtors uh, we can just post it through uh through mls and then there is no and it will populate on on a uh, zillow then so working the way around you know to skip that ten dollars because you know uh, it's the occupancy is pretty high especially it's very hard to lease out condos in seattle like, uh, you know, I have one sitting for three months and now I'm not even taking condos anymore in Seattle to manage unless they are outside a bit of downtown. It's almost impossible to fill them up and you cannot just keep paying $10 a week. Because for it. of all the protester stuff in there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's really hard. Um, I had one uh, sitting on for, it's really good property, beautiful. It's uh, um, So we dropped the rent from $2,200 to 1750 and still there is no applicants on there. Are you finding that uh, landlords, and we got John here. John's a property manager too. John yeah. meets him at, John's at Windermere. You John. can make yourself and uh, he's newer in the game and he's working for Windermere Property Management. Yeah, I actually saw him yesterday, I think on the uh, RHAW, I think. Is that, was that you, John? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, somebody no, from Windermere was there. Okay. Your, your mic's not working. We can't hear you. You're all garbled up there. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Are you guys getting any, any of you brokers out there, uh, are you getting any um, landlords that are deciding to sell just because of the Seattle craziness? Anybody? You guys don't do property management, do you, Katrina? Uh, just a little bit of our own stuff. Um, but what I was got a lot of on that Kirkland condo was people calling, even people, just uh, property owners up on Capitol Hill were inquiring about it and you know, people are trying to get out of the area personally. 
So they're, they're like, let me move to the East side. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Right. So I, it kind of feels like anything you can buy or grab on the East side these days with all the movement. Although then there's the reverse news of REI bailing on their big new headquarter building. Right. And yeah. now spread out. Through Wait, what's that? Tell more about that. Oh, I don't know too much. Does anybody else want to say anything? REI has just had just built like a corporate headquarter building in Bellevue. Do, is that right? Anybody? Um, yeah, that's what I heard. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, again, I think same information that REI is actually selling their headquarters so they can cash out on that and invest more in their work from home technologies. Um, so they, they will be no longer uh, their headquarters anywhere. Technically, everybody will work from home. Well, it did say, I think it also said that they were going to, or maybe, uh, I think Offer, uh, if I'm saying his name correctly, is the one that posted that article that I saw. Weren't they going to be spreading out in, in a few different places in Seattle? It sounds more like, go ahead, John. Yeah. Oh, we can't hear you, John. Yeah. Do you know sign language? <laughs> go, go, go uh, are you trying to talk on something other than your computer mic? Yeah, I do need to try something else. Yeah, I don't know if Joe Bauer, who knows all that stuff, can give you some tips, but we can't hear you. Um, so, um, yeah, but I don't know. I think uh, it's interesting to see. To It's, it's going to be interesting to watch the stats on Seattle versus East Side, right? Anybody else have anything to add? Yeah, Over it's pretty uh, easy to rent out in the single-family houses in East Side. Um, like I have property like going off my hand like within one day and I'm talking about like these slum properties which nobody wants to live in there um, listed one and, and at the right rent gone in one day so a lot of people moving out of Seattle and they're trying to just grab whatever they can right I, I have an off-market you know client that has a, a Redmond totally they're like they're wonderful people, but they basically run their properties into the ground, right? They're fabulous people, but they just don't do any repairs uh, and they keep the rent, you know, they just keep them always full and they don't do the repairs um, and they're getting old. And, um, yeah. you know, there's an opportunity for me to swoop in on there. And I was thinking, okay, you know, maybe I can lease option it, you know what I mean? Like lease it and during the lease option period, do some work to it with my, price that I have negotiated at this, you know, beat up home price. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, go ahead and, and find somebody else to buy it at that higher price after I've maybe dumped some money in there, you know, taking it to the next level. Nothing doesn't even, you know, or better yet, it'd be awesome to hang on to it, but it's very difficult. I don't think you can buy something like that in cash flow. So, you know, it's probably a house I could pick up for six twenty five. You know, but it's not, you know, it's not going to cash flow unless you do yeah. something, right? What do you guys, yeah. Katrina, what do you think about all that stuff or knee? Um, so it, is it a single family home? Yeah, it's like a split entry in a nice so, back. Yeah, do they have, do they have a mortgage on it? Nope, I can sell or find it. So then I would just, yeah, you could lease option it and just during your renovation period, not have any lease payments, right? Because you're adding and improving so much value um, or buy it on a note. And then, so your, your payments don't begin until, and you could also just do it as interest only. Um, right. That, I can probably get away with some sort of, I probably can't get away with a zero payment. I, I, I might be able to, if I gave them or like a, yeah, a, or, at the end, right? Yeah. Or yeah. Or the, the, the uh, capital that you're putting into the improvements of the security, right. That could be considered, you know, there should be some consideration given to that as down right. payment or option fee or something. Right. Like yep. Gotta love lease options, guys. If you guys, now is such a good time with all these landlords that are uh, going to be questioning what their move should be. Uh, understanding seller financing and lease options has gotta be, in my opinion, one of the top things that you should learn about right now. I mean, Katrina is the rock star on that sort of thing as well. Um, Ni, what's going on in your world, my friend? Hey guys. Long time no see. <laughs> hey, I, I need, I'm, when we get off here, I'm going to send that link to you and Justin. I totally spaced out nice. because I turned 50 and now I've, I have a short term memory loss. <laughs> no joke. It is not, I'm not kidding. It's terrible. So I got it at, at like 25. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
no, things are good. Uh, we're kind of starting to slowly ramp up uh, lending on our side. And so bridge loans, rental mm -hmm. loans, rental loans have been interesting. Um, you know, before, before COVID, there was only like a half or one point spread between conventional and, and the, uh, the asset-based lending. And now there's like almost a two or 3% spread. Um, so right. it makes much more sense to still do conventional if you can, because rates are at an all time low. I mean, under, well, under 3% th under for primaries and then like probably in the fours, sometimes fives for investments. Um, so our rental loans are in the, the sixes. You know. Isn't the challenge now, Nee, that um, the rates and everything are great, but the reserve requirements and, you know, qualifying got tougher for self-employed. And Keith and I actually just did a podcast that's coming out today exactly on this topic. Um, Joe is uh, going to put it out today or tomorrow, right, Joe? And uh, we covered kind of the current situation for the self-employed as well as thinking about um, you know, loan terms, you know, how rates are so low and, you know, should you be considering, you know, you could put your, your primary off a lot faster with a 15 year versus a, you know, or a 20 year versus a 30 year and just some strategies on that. Um, but, uh, yeah, what are you, what are you guys up to? Who are you lending to these days, Nee? I mean, investors, as always, we haven't really announced that we're, you know, fully back to lending yet just because we, want to just kind of be selective about it at first, but um, kind of opening doors a little bit more. I would say like across the board, lending is getting looser and looser by the week now, it's looking like. So things are moving pretty much fast back on track to where we were be before COVID. I mean, rates aren't there yet. Um, and are you talking about there. from the hard money or every perspective? Everywhere. I mean, commercial is slower to get back. Uh, hard money is fat much, this has been the fastest to get back. Conventional, I mean, they're starting to loosen things too. Uh, it's moving somewhat slowly, but I heard there was a big announcement, I think it was yesterday, that uh, Fannie and Freddie are making things a little bit more expensive starting September 1st, so. Right, that's check what we're talking about. Yeah. Half a point added to, just on refinances, I think, not on purchases, right? So, I mean, so things are changing all the time. So, uh, you know, whatever lender you're using, check back with them constantly or and see how things have changed. I mean, yesterday or a couple of days ago, you know, Bob or Merchants announced they're back to 90% on the cost. Right. I think they're, they're the first ones I've seen at that. Uh, do you know them? You know them, right? Katrina, you work with Merchants, right? Bob? Yeah, Bob Thomas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, really, really good guy. Katrina, what do you think, I mean, Rick called me, as, what is the need that's not fulfilled between traditional hard money and conventional that you think investors that are creative investors or rock stars like yourself, where's the lack of availability of funds? Is it second lien position money on development or what, tell me where that is. Cause I know Rick and I are talking, you know, um, but what do you, what, tell us. So uh, Rick's actually on the call right now. I don't know if he can unmute himself, but I know he's been working on that. And, um, what I can say is, yeah, it would be secondly, it's actually, so there's, with the new RSL zoning, um, if Rick can take himself off the mute, maybe he can also pick up on the, that need. But um, with the new RSL zoning and using the condominiumize instead of a unit lot subdivide, it's a much quicker process. So we can actually turn things around real quick, sell the existing property in probably less than, you know, we could get it on the market within a week or two of closing. And you can pay full retail. And then, yeah, and then that sells at full retail. And then we, we put in a fence, right? We've got the new survey and the new condo docks. And we've got that vacant land that we can then build in the future. But we can pretty much cash that, everything, you know, all the funds that we took out, out pretty quickly. So, I mean, as quickly as we can turn around and sell that, that first house. So for any of you guys that have anything zoned RSL, Katrina would be a very good person for you to take that deal to right now, okay? Um, I actually had one on 13th as well. Ours is on 13th. I know, um, that's what, but, but, but the, my sellers, my homeowners that I had um, were, were savvy to what they had. You know what I mean? Are you finding mm -hmm. that they know what they have? And so they're taking a bite out of one of the, out of one of the lots, you know, so they get, they want price or they're not, they're just letting you pick it up. for. They the do, I mean, they, yeah, they just pretty much want, they're not willing to go do that work themselves. And I don't know that there's a lot of people out there right now that are doing the, 
the quick turnaround. Um, no, right. I don't think you're the first person that I've heard that doing that because everybody else I know is doing the, you know. You know. Yeah, that takes like nine to 12 months. Yeah, um, right. So, well, this is our first one, so we'll see how it goes. But um, what I asked is, is you can condominiumize these lots. And uh, so what I asked is I said, can you condominiumize a piece of vacant land? And the answer we got back was yes. So um, you can. And, and they're also doing that. I think Jimmy has done that on uh, the Dadu, you know, where you condominiumize that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you could, you could. Yep, exactly. So exactly. you can, you can do that kind of minimization and then, um, yeah, and then just hold on to that land for pretty much, I mean, you've just gotten that extra land, maybe two buildable lots uh, for almost nothing. Right. But, uh, so, uh, unmuted, so. I'm curious to know if the homeowners who are buying the front house, right, we're talking about an existing, you know, retail priced normal home at whatever condition good enough retails uh getting sold knowing that this is going to happen in the back and and my first thought is on those like well doesn't that decrease the value when you've now lost your whole backyard i mean it's but if you're getting it at a discount right then and you're getting it at a discount and if you can you can if you can um you know fence it in and create some privacy in a way that they now have still just this nice little yard i mean there's still enough space Right. That they, you know, that they have, um, I mean, if you look at detached, to, or the detached condos or the townhomes that exist, right, you're just, you're combing out against that. Right. And, and in this particular neighborhood, um, I, uh, I sent you a link, uh, there were the MLS number. Um, Heaton Daner did a sort of front house, back house, complete rebuild. Yeah. But they're under contract to sell the 800 square foot DADU for um, just under $500,000. So right. 800 square feet for $500,000. Um, we're not we're not planning on doing anything that um, extravagant with this property, but you end up getting the dirt for so cheap that um, that that there's really a lot of profit in it. And the and the question that you asked, you know, where where is the gap um, when we when we find a pocket of opportunity like this, we need to act quickly. And so we, you know, we push all of our resources into it and, um, and are looking for others who want to, to, to uh, join with us and either lend on that or partner on that um, so that we can uh, buy more and, and, you know, essentially make hay while the sun is shining. How are you, so how, so you're having to make the initial purchase and what type of, uh, on the one that you did, did you just use your own cash or did you put some hard money or private money on it to close and you know you can ramp up and you know you need just more funds or right? Um, we, so uh, we used uh, we used a lender um, for the property on 13th and um, uh, and we um, yeah we need we need money to ramp up. Um, we've got a number of these going right now and, and um, are seeing a lot more of them that we wish we could um, that we we could take down, um, and we're we're just sort of uh, funds limited right now. So right. we're looking for partners for that. How awesome would it be to be able to get seller financing on something like that, right? And then a quick pay them off in just what a few months or something, right? Right. Um, that that would be awesome. That would be awesome. So the 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 lending partners that you need um would be either big lending partners that can go in first position or you know some people don't have that much money right so then it would be um you know i assume you're able to get the first position taken care of right and you just right. need the second position uh taken care of that will cover you know whatever the equity is required plus the cost to do the condominiumizing because that's it, right? That's um, it. Yeah, but then, and then the question is for me, how soon, because the profit, well, you get your money back then. Now you're, you just got your money back because you've sold the front house. But then um, it's to be seen yet how quickly you're going to sell the, the dirt and back, right? We may that's build those out ourselves. Right, which is a whole We have a lot of flexibility. So we can build them out ourselves. We can take them to a builder or... Um, you know, or just sit on them, actually, because there would be really no debt. Right. Yeah. 
So good. Yeah, and the key there being the, the key there being that quick turnaround of the front house. And so, yeah, my only first thought was, oh, is it gonna, is it gonna be hard to sell the front house? But I, maybe not, right? Now, this is King County that we're talking about, right? And kind of, I mean, that this is not something doable in, in the east side and like Bellevue and stuff, right? The zoning doesn't allow that over there or is it, anybody know? So we, you can do the, um, so it, it is King County and I think Bellevue has, uh, I can't remember, we'll find out when we're talking to our planner, but I think it's Bellevue has opted out of allowing these condominiumizations to happen. Um, and, uh, and, and what makes it, what makes Seattle unique is the RSL zoning. So you can take these pretty, you know, already it's 5,000, 6,000 square foot lot, right? And you've, you've got so much more density, which makes it more doable and more parcels. And more acceptable because it's being done already. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's really good stuff. If you guys are interested in that, like, uh, you know, they're looking for some, some lending partners on that sort of thing. Uh, me, so there, I don't know, you guys probably, you know, can't do something like that because you're not, you wouldn't be in, in first position. I imagine that the first position money you're putting down is, is cheaper than what you can get with hard money or you might be stuck with having to use some hard money. Katrina, are you going to, or Rick, are you guys going to be stuck using hard money a little bit on the takedown? It depends. We've got, so outside of these two projects, we've got other projects that we, you know, we uh, just used our own cash on. So as soon as those close, then, you know, well, it's just always a timing. It's a timing. in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Super awesome. Are you seeing anybody else do this sort of thing, Nee? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm half working on, on things. Uh, what, was, what was your question? Are you seeing anybody else with that, doing that model? Uh, I know Jimmy Tang was doing it a little bit or attempting to do it. Not too much. I mean, kind of at the forefront um, of what you're doing here, so, which is a good thing. Yeah. That's where opportunities and, are. And it's, yeah, and it's funny. We, one of the people I reached out to, Julie, I reached out to you, but one of the other friends of ours in the, in the business that I reached out to, um, chuckled and said, I've got three of these going right now. <laughs> so great, great minds think alike. Yeah, that's funny. Cause like I said, I had one on the same street as you had it all the way contract, everything agreed to and sitting down at the table. And they said, you know what, um, this, this guy, this broker that has been our family friend for years and years, um, decided that he wants a crack at it because he's our family friend. We're going to let him go first. And I'm like, okay, you mean great. After I gave you all the numbers and told you exactly what, how it's going to go down and how, you know, and I lost it. You know, you can't, I don't know how you Trump, you can't, it's hard to Trump friends and family sometimes. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, it, with that started that way in the beginning, how they had mentioned that to me. And I said, Hey, no problem. I get it. Go flush that out. And if this person can't pull it off for you, then come back to me. And I didn't give them any information. I said, I'm here ready, willing, and able. And so they said, Nope we want to go. He's, he can't figure it out. I said, okay, let's do it. So ready to go sitting there, literally brought the contract already had sent it to their attorney for review and everything. And they, and they pull the rug out and uh, insert this guy, you know, what are you going to do? Right. So, but, they said, but we love right. you. And here's a referral to somebody else. I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. You know, what do you do? You move on. You have an extra glass of, uh, you know, extra Greyhound that night. You might consider asking, well, if there's value to what I brought to you and the information and the model and the plan, um, then, you know, I'd be, ha you can just pay me whatever you feel that was worth. Right. I hear you. And then that might be worth a dinner or, you know, yeah. maybe they'll or give maybe you a percentage. Your, your guy needs to pay me a referral fee or something. Yeah. Happy to work with him, you know, whatever. But, you know, these things happen in real estate. That's the way it goes. So. Um, Aaron, how's it going? Did you end up talking to um, Keith by any chance? Uh, put the contact request out there. I don't have his direct number, so if you have that, that'd be awesome. But I did. I pinged him through his website. So okay. It might be a day or two before he gets back to me. We're talking about our friend Keith Sant, who's a big wholesaler, uh, major systems guy, one of those guys that can just turn it on and get leads, which is a uh, you know. Um, everybody has the opportunity to do that. Most people just choose not to take the focus and it's really hard to stay focused like that. So, um, 
you know, kudos to those that can do it. I suck at it myself, frankly, uh, you know, as far as that goes. So we're talking about where you have major, major systems in place with your, um, with your marketing, your online marketing that you literally can decide just to turn it on and off uh, right. because you're so dialed on your system. So we know a few people like that. Aaron was in need of something like that. So uh, what else is happening? Any, have, anybody have a question about anything that's going on? Anybody I have actually two, two questions. Um, so I have a client who is still subdividing the lot. Um, I'm not representing him any sense. I manage his property in the front and he is asking me to go find a builder for him or find the price of that land just to sell it off. So kind of confused, what should I do in this kind of sense? Like I haven't did uh, any of these type of deals yet. So uh, again, I can just list it as a land and sell it off. And, uh, or he said, uh, you know, if there's any money to be made there that he can actually, you know, he can, the builder can come build it and then they can partner up something and then sell it later once it's a finished product. He's kind of open to partnership, selling it off, you know, and he have two of those in Kenmore. And he has the plants approved already for 2,900 square feet of a house. Anybody want to talk on that one? So two uh, in Kenmore, two houses? Yes. And the lot is about uh, 6,400 square feet. Oh, I have, I have like. somebody to t uh, that can talk to you about that. Um, so can you text me 206-910-2985? Two zero six nine one zero two nine eight five. It's my buddy Dan Wick. He's Mister. He is. He's all over that. Okay. And another question I had. So I'm trying to. Uh, you know, I'm buying one here in in a, in a, in Washington. My first house up here. But I is there a loan? You guys think that it's possible that can finance as a commercial loan in three different states? So my parents are transferring the property under my name in Texas, and I own my own properties in Massachusetts. And the one I'm buying up here, I just want to have like a one umbrella, like a, a mortgage. So I have just one payment and hopefully refinance cash out because all of them have tremendous amount of equity inside. Is there any loan which you think might become possible through commercial lending or something? I think you're talking about a cross collateralized situation, right? Where one loan has okay. collateral. Exactly. On, exactly. Yeah. On a, and, and you're saying it's commercial because why? Because uh, again, I don't qualify for a regular loan. It's gonna be based all on the income of the rental properties. Uh, I don't know, lenders out there, does it matter? We're talking, you have three houses, right? So commercial yeah, there's threshold a, of- There's you know, multiplex in Boston and uh, there's few single family in Texas, which are under my parents' name. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it's harder to cross across different states. Okay. I'll tell you that. Um, Unless you're in, unless you're dealing with a national lender, right? Even national lenders, it's a uh, it is harder when you cross straight state lines. Who's okay. the commercial lender everybody likes here? Joe Whitesall. You guys know him. You know him, Katrina. You know who I'm talking about, Nee. You guys know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I, you can give Joe a shot. I don't know if. Uh, what What's his last name? Whitesell. W H I T S E L. He typically deals more with pure commercial properties, though. Okay. But the CSCV has any thoughts on this? I mean, I. And this is a little bit harder because um, usually lenders like to cross using the same title of an escrow company. Okay. Um, Anything else? Anybody else? I got a question about dealing with a contractor out of state. Um, so I got a project that's been going for quite a while over in Pittsburgh. Um, thought I had a contractor that was finally going to button it up for me. And then he just went MIA on me two weeks ago. <laughs> so I'm really close to finishing up. But I'm just wondering if anybody's dealt with um, action against contractors. Um, never had to really go after a contractor for anything. But I did pay ahead for roofing materials. And he just, it's no materials have been delivered. And like I said, he went MIA. So... I might have to take action against them. I just wonder if anybody has any advice about how to proceed on something like that. We do have a contract um, and I'm going to go through it and just kind of see what it is. But again, you know, I'm, 
I always give the benefit of the doubt. So I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping he shows up again and we finish up, but uh, I want to start something just to take some action. So I don't feel helpless here. Any thoughts? My, my first thoughts are how much money are you out? Um, probably not much more than 10 grand for as far as what, what I've paid ahead for that he hasn't. I think it's on. state by state on all that kind of, uh, uh, stuff. Right. I mean, um, you know who you might ask is Jennifer Beatles, right? Yeah. That's my next stop after this meeting, but I just want to see if anybody here had some thoughts. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, in those situations, you're either probably filing something to go after their bond, or you are spending money, and you just have to cut your losses and move on, you know, or you're spending more money to chase something, you know, that there's no money for. I mean, anybody who's doing shit like that probably doesn't have any money anyways. They're probably, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul and doing all that kind of stuff. So um, he's got a bond. I mean, I know he has a bond, and uh, I've got copies of all his licensure and um, he's added me to that um, for this project. It's really weird because he's got great referrals. His referrals love him. Well, and maybe he got COVID or something. Well, that's what I'm, I mean, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, but it's like- Call his referrals. Yeah, I'm gonna call one of them today as well. So, um, good hmm. thoughts. <laughs> that, uh, that sucks, sorry, that's happening. That's okay. Renee says Joe Whitesall is legit. Right on. Renee, what's going on with you? Aside from talking to me. Nothing. All right. Tanya, what's up with you? Hi, Tanya. Sorry, Julie. It's Renee. I was on mute. No worries. No worries. Uh, just a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Making things happen. So Good stuff. Very, competitive, very competitive environment out there in the uh, residential area. I have a buyer that I have put in three offers on and we've been beat out on all three of them. So if anybody has a house in Woodenville or Bothell that they're looking to sell. Oh, I got know. a big Woodenville one coming up. What's your price point? Um, up to 1.2. Ooh, I have a listing coming on, no joke. Uh, and uh, I'll talk to you about it. 1,150,000 is gonna be our list price in <laughs> Woodenville, big house. Send me the address because I want to make sure it's in the right school district. Okay. But Officially, yeah, let's, since we're let's talk about that offline. That I, that I can't do that because that would be pre-marketing a listing, but I'm happy to talk with you in some format. I'm just saying that because, you know, we got to play by the rules here and this is all recorded. Okay. And, Fair enough. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. I, I will say I am... Um, I, uh, in preparation of that listing, I, um, school's out and, uh, you know, trying to educate the kids in different ways. So I had a, a client that, uh, was not going to meet our staging deadline, which would make, mean that they weren't going to meet our cleaning deadline. And I had to, uh, uh, do a last minute, uh, pulling in of some troops, which included my twin 12 year old girls. So they just got a lesson of, uh, which was kind of fun actually, of what do you do? You do whatever it takes um, that we went and got a U-Haul because my, thanks Katrina, thanks to Katrina, Kirk is tied up and busy, my n number one guy. Thank you. Oh, no. So I, you know, so we I- We love Kirk. I know. I, I, I keep hearing Julie, Julie's voice saying, my life wouldn't work if it weren't for Kirk. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, let's not talk about him because we can't let anybody else have him at this point, but- um, so we had to step up and um, rent a U-Haul, had my kids go fill it. Uh, one came with me uh, five hours and I got, I paid 30 bucks. There's a good deal uh, to load up a U-Haul. And then the next day, the other, my other twin girl had to go unload it at the dump, uh, which was awesome. So just remember to always sort your shit before you get to the dump. But um, shout out to Rodney over at the uh, Shoreline Transfer Station who felt sorry for uh, two girls trying to unload a huge U-Haul full of shit. And he came and basically helped us do it. So we only had to go through once. So very good customer service at the Shoreline Transfer Station from Rodney. Thank you, man, I appreciate that. But that was fun, little lesson for the kids. 
Anybody else got anything going on? What time is it? It's 1210. We can get done early today and get back to work. And if anybody else has anything going on, I am curious to hear how's everybody's rental collections going for August. Mine are going fine. Um, anybody else having any hiccups yet on rental collections? Um, out of uh, just had one is just one tenant for me out of everybody. In Washington or a different state? No, no, in Washington. And, and all, if you want to put all together, yeah, just the one tenant, which I manage for somebody in Tacoma, and that's it. And, yeah, I find that. I was try, Katrina, I was trying to get Brian Blessing to come on and give us an update of how it's going for him because yeah. he's, you know, probably owning some of those Class C properties. Have you heard? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm going yeah, to see him on back. Friday. What's that? Um, I got actually a lot of money back. Uh, people, the good tenants actually paid every money back. So I collected um, somebody recently from March, April, May, June, July, August. He paid me all together in Woodenville, which was a good one. So only one troubled child left in Tacoma. Wow, that's good news. Mm -hmm. I wonder how things are about to change. So did they just, uh, Trump just issued his executive order to change from 600 bucks a week to 400 bucks a week on the unemployment extension, correct? And we're just waiting on, is that correct? Everybody hear that? Yeah. It's not approved though, right? Not approved yet? No, I don't think so. There's no date. I think they're still working on how to implement it. And somebody said it's impossible to implement. So I don't know what's the difference between the previous one and this one, but, yeah. um, but $400, that's what he was saying. Right. And we're waiting for the extension of uh, the rest of this. You know, I was, I was talking to my own financial advisor uh, yesterday. Um, I will say that I, I, I don't know how I did it, but I timed the market with the stock market and I have absolutely crushed it uh, during COVID. I'm like up six figures in the stock market um, uh, since this started just with idle money waiting to see, you know, don't want to start buying a bunch of stuff. I, I don't do, um, I don't buy single family rentals myself. Um, you know, in Washington at this point, I like to buy bigger stuff a little bit or et cetera. So, um, yeah, just, uh, I, I had, uh, just, if anybody's looking for a rock star financial advisor, I certainly have one because when the market started to tank, I've had a long-term plan in place because I diversify my portfolio between real estate and everything else even between asset classes as well. And I had what's called puts in place and those kicked in when the market went down and I fricking didn't take a hit at all. Was comp It's like an insurance policy if your stock account drops and I totally came out smelling like a rose on that. And then I cashed out some of my uh, portfolio and took a I'll say I on purpose took a $25,000 loss to free up some of my money. Uh, so, you know, that's just a little bit. I, I have a, a nice stash, big stash, but I um, then went and bought all the tried and true stuff uh, at, at the dip and have just literally crushed it, knock on wood, you know, bought the Amazons and the Costco's and the DocuSign crushing it. Um, FedEx, UPS, Procter and Gamble, all that kind of Amazon, like I said, medical, some medical stuff and have crushed it. And I will say for those of you that are brokers, um, I've been at eXp for a year and three months or so. When I went in there, they have a, there, they went public, what in 2018. And when I went in, it was stock price was about at mm, seven, maybe it's at $32 today. The, the, the eXp stock price has jumped in the last, I don't know, building weekly, weekly, weekly up to 32 bucks. I've literally made from just being an EXP broker uh, and doing nothing but my job and through revenue share and through their stock, I've made probably 70 grand in the last, this year so far doing nothing, but- Holy crap. Yes, it's insane. So don't believe all the bullshit that you hear. It is, it is I, I know I'm, I don't like, I'm not trying to advertise or recruit anybody, but uh, for me personally, holy shit, it's legit, right? Um, all I did is put 5% of my commissions towards buying that stock at a 10% discount. And then I threw an extra grand, 10 grand on top and it's tripled. So 
that's just part of, you know, so I know all real estate investors hate the stock market, but you know, you got to have, you you have money sitting around. I don't know. I don't, I'm not an out of state investor other than in bigger stuff. Like with Ryan Gibson, I love to invest with those guys because uh, you know, I'm, I'm not the smartest one in the room, but what, what my expertise is guys is that I know, I know who is one of those is right here, Katrina, right? Shout out and Rick, who's the other Katrina, her twin that's on the phone. So Surround yourself with smart people and you will win. You don't have to be the smartest one in the room. All you guys, you know, uh, that's, that's how I roll. So I appreciate you guys showing up and contributing. You guys are all superstars. You know, all of you guys, uh, you know, Samant, you're kicking butt, you know, me and Katrina and Aaron, everybody. I appreciate you guys so much. So Eric Hall's on here from Flynn Family Lending. What's up? Can you hear us? Oh, Who's, we got some chats going on here. You guys can speak up. Um, somebody was asking uh, where to buy inexpensive kitchen cabinets. Darren was and Tanya responded GS and Soto. You guys have any other resources? He's looking for cabinets out in Gold Bar. Uh, anything closer for him? Anybody buying ki kitchen cabinets cheap somewhere? Pius. What? I use Pius for all my flips. Pius? I, don't know, I don't know how close. They're not close to... Gold bar, they're oh, we, in Seattle. But. Yeah. We actually went down to Pius. They, they weren't too bad as far as price was concerned. It was still a little more than we're hoping to pay, but. KT One of mine is just, uh, KT is just a block or two away. And if you take your Pius quote and go to KT, they'll usually beat it. And um, they'll often have in stock what Pius is on back order. Same quality? The, all like three of them identical. from China. Yeah, the KT, GS, and. Um, Pius, I think it's GNS uh, or JNS. Maybe it's JNS. Yeah. All three of them, China. GNS. And they do. They'll yeah. match each other's prices and yeah. be very competitive. One sure. of my big, uh, one of my big flip friends uses Contractors Warehouse, I think, um, which is kind of like it's kind of like you got to be a member of it. But I know they they buy a lot of stuff through there, I believe. Um, is that over in Redmond? That is. I want. It might be Kirkland. I'm not sure exactly, but uh, KD3 Home Solutions, one of my most talented flip buddies, uh, uh, and they're also a design build firm and a general contractor if anybody ever needs that for your retail stuff, um, you know, uh, they're, they're good guys. Uh, Aaron said he bought Zoom at the dip and almost doubled on that. Yep, me too, same. So what else is going on, Joe? Joe is the only one living the real true life out there on the road, having fun. Him and Jennifer Beatles, right? You gotta meet up with Jennifer. You guys need to do like some sort of Facebook live on the road, Joe, from the RVs and the camper vans. Um, uh, Keith's not on here, but us Clark girls are looking to rent an RV. Have you guys done that? Any recommendations on where to do that? Cause we are. Yeah, I heard about outdoorsy.com. Outdoorsy.com? Yeah. Or well, just ask Jennifer to rent her. She's not using it for a couple months. <laughs> Is she why? What do you mean? She's staying at home for a couple months, and then and then I think she's taking another road trip again. Oh, are they back? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, she's got some investor summit coming up that she's working on, right? Something she's putting together. Yeah, but outdoorsy.com. I just heard about it this week. I'm like, oh. yeah, I just looked at another one too. I can't remember what it was, but it's like an Airbnb for RVs. Yeah, uh, it's like a tour. I don't know, Joe Bauer, maybe you can, you can chime in on this. Would you, would you guys rather rent from a rental place that has some protocol of cleaning or service or from an Airbnb type RV where, you know, I don't know, maintenance wise, I get worried about the, uh, the bathroom thing on those things. Maybe Joe's off using the bathroom right now, so he's not talking to us. Just kidding, haha. -ha. Anyways, um, we've heard good things about both, he says, cool. Outdoorsy, and what was the other one? RV something or other? I'll have to look right. it up for you. I can't remember the, the name of it, but similar tech thing. Well, I might be the next one that's on the road here, I'm hoping to get out, but um, uh, anything else anybody has today? It's 1220 about? Starting to wrap up. I appreciate you all. Anything left in the chat? We'll say we've heard good things about both. Joe says, 
Uh, oh, Joe's not, his mic's not working today because he's out in the woods somewhere. Um, Joe Whitesell, we said is legit for commercial lending. Um, I should do a podcast with him. So maybe I'll do that. So um, also still looking, me and I, my partner in our podcast series called My First Three Deals. Um, we are looking for continued guests. We need to rent. We kind of took a break from that when everything, everybody had to go figure out what their life was going to look like for the past several months. We're back on track now with everything. We took a little two week break for the summer, but if, if you know of anybody or you yourself would like to be on the nuts and bolts of real estate investing podcast on our series called my first three deals, um, that would be fantastic. We'd like to hear from you. Super easy stuff. Um, you don't have to prepare. You'll know everything off the top of your head. So give us some recommendations. If you have anybody, text me at 206-910-2985 uh, or email me at julie at seattleinvestorsclub.com with anybody um, that you think would be great or any topics that you want us to cover. We have very good track record of pretty much getting anybody we ask at this point to be on our podcast. Um, because we've been there for so long. Um, so any good, any good, did anybody listen? Didn't Lika do her thing, her webinar? Did anybody listen to that? Was that yesterday? How was it? Anything, any good nuggets or new stuff? Any? Yeah, I, I think the last presenter mentioned that um, in August they're seeing collections down almost 15% from the last three months so far. Was that an in-town or out-of-town person? I think uh, just national. National per national person. Uh, well, I should probably check in with um, with uh, Preston, see how he's doing, right? But he's class, he doesn't really have much class C. I'm curious, class C is the one that's going to take the hit probably, right? Yeah, I'm Brian. We need to get Brian on the podcast, blessing. Yeah, I'm going to work on that. He's, he's, you just got to let him ramble. We'll just let him talk for 45 minutes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Love yeah, that. he'd have us all. Uh, he's so funny. We'd all be laughing. Yeah, he would be. So I'm gonna. I'll try and jump on that. But okay, guys, uh, over and out for today. Um, and uh, I'll do a, be a better job next week of trying to let everybody know in advance. I'm, I'm getting a bunch of listings myself here coming up and last minute problems and kicking people off. And I will say one thing cool, little victory on my part again no exp recruiting here going on but exp has this thing called express offers which is a, a marketplace of cash buyers uh that they've created which is national because exp is a national brokerage firm they have they i have connected with exp corporate here in washington i am the washington person while they are testing some company marketing they have kicked out for that program on express offers which is like i said kind of their own cash buyer platform which you know, Keller Williams and some of these other big, you know, just like Zillow's cash buyer, you know, Redfin now, you know, I think Keller Williams partnered up and then canceled their relationship with OfferPad. Um, EXP has express offers, marketplace of cash buyers. They've now started corporate marketing that you can tap into. I'm their beta tester in Washington and they've sent me some leads of which we just converted one to a listing um, recently. And all just off of that plugin. Uh, and not only that, I'm using a concierge program to spend 20 grand for that homeowner. They don't have any money. And we are giving them a boost of 20 grand at a paid for, done for you, closing, uh, pay at close uh, concierge model. Um, also that EXP will be rolling out that I am beta testing. Um, some of you may have heard of that. They're called Curbio. And I have connected them to EXP to, to make a uh, strategic business alliance and a national concierge brand uh, for us. And we, it, we just knocked it out of the park, getting one done. So um, there are so many options these days. Katrina, yeah. you guys could use them too. Can I ask a question on that? Like what kind of return? Say, can you, can you write, write out what that is or put it in the chat or something? Yeah. What, what kind of return do you yeah. get on the fronted money for that? Who? No, yeah, it's their like money. Like the model. Like, for, you know, when they, when you do some of the fix up. Like I don't get any. 20 grand. What, what is the, the bump for putting that out there? Kirby owes, it's Kirby owes money. They're providing the money. Oh, okay. Right? 
and they're, they are um, a national company um, that is uh, basically, you don't need to go join Compass and pay their high splits. Sorry, if you're at Compass, I don't mean to say that. Uh, Compass has lots of, I'm not trying to beat up on Compass, but a lot of people probably went there because they could use their concierge program and that you don't need to join a brokerage firm to do that. Curbio is a service for all of you who are smart enough to show up to these weekly meetups and get these tips that you can use. Katrina, if you did not have hard money in first position on your one of your deals, you could use Curbio's money and their general contracting service to flip your own house. They won't go behind hard money though, okay? So there's something that, that's different. I don't know if they'll go behind a private loan, but they won't go behind, you know, like a, like you have a private, you know, but let's say you had a partner that was a private investor. And for that reason, you brought in that partner. So you guys could use their cash as in a partnership and it's not a loan. Then you could literally go use Curbio's money to flip the house. That's cool. Cause a lot of times we'll even purchase with our own cash. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we fund the renovation ourselves. If Kirby is cheap, That's then right. we could just use theirs. Yeah. And I don't know if they're cheaper, but it might be cheaper than using your money. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah not, the, tagging, they're not tagging on a bunch of huge fees because they're trying to grow their model across the country. So literally, I have uh, got it where freaking EXP nationally is creating a relationship with um, EXP, with uh, Kirby O, and where we have our own brand, right? But it'll be Kirby O behind it. And, and it, the model for that is for retail sales, oh. right? Where you can just get some fix up to right. kind of bump the value. If you are with us and you're talking and yeah. you're in our world, you, me, and we're brokers and investors, we specialize in providing options. So we don't really care. You're either going to buy it or you're going to provide a service to your clients that you can provide options. You know, there's no way they can say no to you unless they're just not motivated or they have a friend or family member. Okay. That's what I do. That's how I roll guys. That's my thing. So, um, it's awesome, you know, and I just, you know, find it interesting that you don't have to go to some expensive split situation. Um, because they only, cause they offer that program and it's, they're the only ones and you have to be there to take advantage of it. No, not true. Okay. If you want to know more about it, call and ask me, but I don't want to get on a soapbox today and it's 1227. So uh, happy to talk with anybody about that uh, further, but super, super rad. And I guess what I'm saying is that all this marketing um, platform that they are rolling out as a full service, you know, national brokerage firm worked. I just did one case study, right? Not only did we get the lead from the express offers cash I buyer marketing that they did for me, but then it didn't work out as a cash offer, but I was able to provide that as an option. And then my specialty is I just converted it to a listing. Well, they didn't have any money. Sometimes I might loan the money, but in this particular case on this house, I didn't feel like there was enough of a fee involved that I wanted to front any of my own money, right? The, the, it's, a, it's a 350 to 380,000 priced home that, um, that uh, is in Port Orchard. And, you know, I don't look work in Port Orchard. So I've teamed up with somebody, you know, I have 30 brokers under me and I've, you know, working with them, they run the show, right? So it's now going to be a lead generation way as like the leader, you just, I can just hand out leads, right? I can plug into that platform and hand out leads, right? To the people that are on my, my team, which is, you know, which I call that VIP education community. So I'm just happy that it worked, right? But I want to tell Katrina, she owns a brokerage firm. She can do the same. You might not want to just because there's a, they're, they're a strategic partnership. You have to have a big spend on marketing. You have to have a marketing spend partnership with them. That isn't cheap, but you know, for national brokerage firms, um, you know. Is that for Curbio? Is that what you're talking about? But right. So you might not use it to roll out as something that your brokerage firm, but you personally can use it, right? Or you and your agents can know about it without making a formal relationship with them, right? Yeah, I want to learn more about that. I'd love to chat with you on offline. Yeah, where are you at? It. What are you up to? What's your discipline? Uh, what do you mean discipline? I mean, are you a, a investor, a broker investor, a lender? A broker and looking to get into the invest 
existing side. So newbie. So I'm, I'm wanting to create that first three deals so that I can be on your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> With exactly. me. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it sounds like something, cause I just actually on this while I'm on the chat with you guys just got a text from an agent about this, a deal. So um, maybe Good. something. Yeah. So I'd love to chat with you offline. Yeah. And Katrina is also a broker and owns a brokerage firm. So you can reach out to her too. I'm not here to steal anything for myself, but yes, I'm available to talk to everybody, but I'm sharing the love. I appreciate you guys so much showing up that you know, um, I want to make sure everybody gets their due say here. So, and the spotlight put on them. So you are so rare, Julie, you are so rare. Well, I've heard that before, but not always in, you know, I, I call myself <laughs> weird. Yeah, that, yeah. You're always giving first before anything else. That's... Isn't this more fun though, to do it together guys and keep all our friendships and help each other out. And there's enough to go around. Isn't it more fun this way? I sure think so. Right. Um, and, uh, anybody else want to talk about their service here and just say what you do. And we got some property managers that we've said hi to anybody else, anybody else feel free to do so. You know, I, I, when there's like 50 people, I don't like to do that as much or for 30, 40 people. It's harder to, you know, when nobody's going to, you know, we only have about 13 people on here today. So if anybody wants to say anything, now's your chance before we jump off. I, I want to say something real quick. Oh, go ahead, Nick. Oh, I just want to announce. Um, so we haven't done office hours for a while. Albert, Albert and I. So me, Albert, Beth, and Matt will be doing office hours again virtually at the end of this month. Awesome. Will you make sure to post that on Seattle Investors Club? I will, once we get a date down. <laughs> awesome stuff. And whatever else you guys are doing, of course, post on there so we can help you guys and everybody can know. Um, anybody else, Aaron, what's up? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I'm really kind of turning my focus to partnering with people. So, you know, this year I did finally get my, pass my license test. I talked to Julie a little bit about that. Katrina, I'd like to reach out and talk to you about your brokerage as well. Just trying to learn more about the different opportunities. But, uh, as far as a service, I'm, I'm really trying to leverage my experience with flipping and, and work with folks that are getting deals. Um, but aren't as comfortable with the flipping process. And I'd love to partner with folks like that. So have completed several uh, successful deals locally. Um, and I really enjoy that, but I'm, I'm, I don't like being a one man show and I'm really looking to partner with others more. So I'm, I'm trying to just put it out there <laughs> more and, and just say, Hey, leverage my experience and love to work with you guys. So um, I know the hardest thing for newbies is finding a deal that actually pencils. Um, and I totally appreciate how hard that is. I'm very good at running numbers. Um, if you need help running numbers um, on a deal, I, I help quite a few newbies uh, do that, that reach out to me all the time. And unfortunately, a lot of them don't pencil, but it's good to know that up front. Um, and, and again, happy to help people run those numbers. Um, so, uh, Aaron, I just want to say, I actually do think you should talk to Katrina um, because she generates a lot of leads. Yeah. Uh, always needs a lot of help. And, um, you know, I talked to Aaron last night about EXP and, and gave him some ideas on, on that, but, um, in, in a, in a sharing mindset, sorry, Kevin, you're in, are you in EXP, Kevin? You're watching me sell myself short right here. So don't tell anybody, uh, <laughs> uh you know, uh, just because I know Aaron and I know Katrina, uh, definitely, I, I definitely think you guys, uh, should have a conversation. Who knows? I don't know if it's the right fit for you, Aaron, but. Um, I, I do back that and, and think because Aaron is like, I have a lot of value as in, in, can getting project, like a project manager. Right. But he doesn't want to spend all his time generating leads. Right. And he wants to trade some of his expertise in banging out projects. He's kind of like a more advanced version of Kirk, honestly, way more. I mean, not even Kirk's, you know what I mean? Kat uh, Katrina Kirk's just our punch list guy. Aaron is not that he's like full on going to be able to get shit done in a, in a, uh, from top to bottom. Uh, Aaron, I need to talk to you like yesterday. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I'm going to give you my info uh, through the message, through the chat. I also wanted to chime in there, Aaron. Um, I'm also an, uh, an aspiring investor. I've yet to do my first deal too. So uh, if you want to chat on the side as well, I'd be more than happy to. I'm yeah, also a cool. licensed broker at EXP. So I'm trying to do the broker investor um, thing myself. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm just adding that to my arsenal as well. So I've been doing it as a non-agent for, well, since 2005, but very actively since 2017. Mm -hmm. um, and just want to add that to my tool belt as well. So 
I think I brainwashed him. To get you totally it. did. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you're great, Julia. I just enjoy being a part of the, the community. All right. What's your info, Aaron? How do we get in touch with oh, you? Did I, I just chatted it to you privately there, Katrina. Am I going to the wrong one? Oh, I bet it's going to um, the wrong. Well, Tanya wants your contact info. Yeah, yeah I do. put it on public. Hold on a sec. Yeah, I was going to say, you just need to make that public, man. Yeah, let me just do it to everybody. There's no we secret. We all want Aaron. Come help us with our projects. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'm actually partnering. So I've got my first part, you know, true partnership coming up, a uh, big project in Kirkland. Um, so I'm excited about that. Going to go walk it today at three. Awesome. Already under contract, but uh, the JV is still being inked. <laughs> but I'm excited about that one. So good job, Aaron. Yeah, thank you. Way to put yourself out there and ask for what you need, too. So you're smart. So no, I've got to stop trying to grind out the stuff that drains me completely and just really get focused on adding value where I get energized and where other people get drained. <laughs> so yeah. Right on. Yep. All right, guys, I'm calling it. Thanks. You guys. Happy week. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Bye everybody. Good on, guys.